Welcome back. In our last video we looked at how to open Google Earth in the Chrome browser and we looked at basic navigation around the maps including the tools over here in the lower right hand corner. Let's start now over here on the left. The first tool I'm going, I'll, we'll come back to the hamburger up here, but the first tool that we want to look at right now is the search tool, something you might be familiar with. So you simply click on the search tool and now you can put in whatever you want. So I can put in 12 Main Street, there we go, Ramsey, New Jersey, and it will fly us to that location. So I can see the pin is in here now, um, it opens up a little box showing me the map here, and if there were any information that were entered about this location, if it was a significant location, the uh, text would be here, and we'll see that in other examples later on. So here we go. So I've zoomed in a little bit. I can see the pin. I could turn on a little man and see if I had any option for street view. Oh, looks like I do. So I'll click down in there. It'll zoom me right in. And now I can I can actually s spin it. I'll spin it this way, all the way around, see what's in the area. And I can see where 12, it looks like 12 is actually this door over here. So maybe a door leading, leading to some apartments, etc. Um, I can search not only for addresses, but for the typical things you'd search for in Google Maps. So, Rumpo College of New Jersey, there it is. And it's going to fly me directly there. Now, you can see information has been added for Rumpo College, College in this information block over here. Um, the college name is here. A little subtitle. This is a Wikipedia entry, and if I click the link, it would take me out to Wikipedia. And, we'd, you know, we'd get that entry there. It's a little slow in loading today. But I'm going to come back while that's loading. And you can see now that I've, I've, I've zeroed in and I'm kind of hovering around this college view. Um, sometimes you'll have this link, People all, Also Explore. If you click on that, it's going to bring you to things it associates with the college. So now this is Montclair State College, uh, William Patterson College, College of New Jersey, Keene University, Stockton, etc. Fairly Dickinson. And if I wanted to visit one of these, I could simply fly to it using the paper airplane over here. Okay. And you can go right through the deck. Quite a few. Now I'm back at Ramapo. If I wanted to go back to Ramapo, I would click the little airplane. It would bring me up here. I can always close this window with the X if I don't want it here. But it's nice. It gives me some information. And the last thing I can do from this screen is I can bookmark. And if I were to do this, it would save it to something called My Places. And we'll, we'll see that a little more later. But remember this bookmark because it can be useful. If I want to stop the spinning view, I can simply click on the map at any time. And that will, and that will stop it. Okay, so keep in mind all types of searches are useful here. Now, the little captain's wheel is Voyager. This is just opening up some content that Google has developed. So this is the featured content here, uh, Endangered Parrot of the Night, Earth at Night, so different different Google tours that have been put together with Google Earth that you could visit. So I can click on that, and it'll zoom me out, and it will take me, it'll take me there, and I'll see the information that was assembled. I'll just take a second or two to load, and now I'm here. Okay, so it's brought me to Denali uh, National Park and Preserve. And now it's going to bring me over to Shenandoah National Park. So this is a tour that somebody's constructed that I can follow. And you'll find that under this navig uh, this Voyager link. It's like a little captain's wheel. If you scroll down a little bit, you can um, not just use their featured stuff, but you can look through categories etc so this is the editors picks up here but i can click on a travel category and i can look through what's available there 
I can look through nature, culture, sports, history, education, etc. So all here. Kind of kind of nice. Okay, the next says I'm feeling lucky. So if I click on that, it's similar to the I'm feeling lucky button in Google search. You just wind up at some random place, which can be interesting if you've got a little time to do it. Um, this looks like a place I've never heard of. It's a volcanic lake lake in northern Iceland. Okay, so that could be it could be interesting. Uh, maybe something I want to learn about. I'm going to skip over this. This is my places, and we looked at the symbol before. That's how we can add a bookmark. We'll come back to this. If you are on a particular view that you like, let's say that um, I just like that map of Iceland, or that's something that I want to share. You can click on the share button. You can share directly with Facebook, Twitter, Google+, or Google Classroom, which is a really nice option. You can also just get this link. So here I'm going to copy that link. And you can see I'm just opening a new window and it's loading up Google Earth again. We'll have to wait for a minute or two for that to happen. But it's going to bring me right into that same view that I had before. Let me cancel out of here. You can see here I am in the first window. There I am in the second. So identical. Okay, there's also a ruler. Now this is something that you can use um, while the image is open. It's not going to save to the map or anything, but it's a, a great tool that students can use. So if you were wondering for some reason, let me close this up, about how big Iceland actually was, I can open the ruler. I'm going to click on one end. I'm going to click on the other end. And, it's, and it tells me that right now I'm looking at about 497.36 or 500 kilometers. So a little conversion there, and you can see it's about 300 miles. Okay, you double click to finish. And if you're done with that, you can just say start new. And we'll wipe that line out for you. I can reposition here. Now, um, my other option is I don't have to just do a straight line like that. I mean, that's great for a straight distance, but if you wanted to follow a road or something that, that that took turns, etc. You can simply click, continue clicking, and it's going to give you uh, the total of the distance along that line, which is a nice feature. Okay, I'm going to start new one more time. What if I was interested in knowing the approximate area of Iceland? Okay, well, I can do that too. I'm going to do this pretty roughly. I'm just going to trace the outside of this shape. I'm not going to be too overly picky about being perfect. But I could. I could put more points on this if I wanted. Notice I can adjust my wheel as I'm actually clicking which is nice so I don't lose my I don't lose my work if I accidentally reorient. Oh, let's just do this. And if you double click your start point, you close the shape. Now it's giving me the perimeter and it's also giving me the area. So this is a great tool for students to go out and gather some of this information on their own be able to um, answer some of their own questions. Okay, let's return to the left menu, and now we'll come back to something we skipped, and that's the hamburger up at top. When we look in there, you'll see that a lot of the same features are available there. So the search feature we looked at, the Voyager we looked at, my places we'll look at it in a moment. Um, but there are a couple of additional options. One is map style, and if I click on that, you can see that I do have a couple of choices. Um, the one I'm currently in is Exploration, which shows me borders, labels, places, and roads. Um, but there's some additional, some additional information available if I go to everything. Iceland might not be the best place to see those things, but in a more developed area you would. And then there's also this custom option. When you open it up, you can see that this map is actually 
are composed of layers. And so right now it's showing you clouds, but if I don't want to see the clouds, I can simply turn them off. And then I'm not, I'm not going to have my view obstructed by that from a higher elevation. Uh, you can see that some of these have a flat line, so let's look at roads and see what that says. And it says, oh, um, highways are marked, but arterial and local roads are not turned on. So if I were to click that, turn all the roads on. Okay, again, Iceland might not be the best case, but you'll see uh, roads appear and disappear. Now, the more you turn on also, the uh, longer things take to load and build. So you really should pick what you want to get a nice clear image that's not cluttered and, and um, loads, loads in a reasonable amount of time. You see that most of the places options are on except for businesses. Okay, I'm going to go back to the default view. And those are map styles. You can play with those. Also under the hamburger you will find photos. Turning that on gives you access to photos that people have taken and uploaded and then match this particular location. So let's let's maybe zoom out a little bit. Note that the further out I am, the fewer circles. And as I zoom in, if other pictures are available, so now I'm zooming in a little further, and you can see that they start to appear for more and more local areas. Now if I try to open this, I'm going to find out it's not going to work for me. And the reason is, is that this tool is still on up in the corner. So I really have to close that down. Um, and then if I click on one of the images, it will open up the picture. And if there are a series of pictures associated with this particular location, you can see this is one of 21. I can now page through. And I think this is a great way to give kids a feel, a feel for uh, the circumstances in other places, for what things really look like, and it just makes it a little more tangible. Okay, when you're done with that, you can just click the arrow and you would be back on your map. So that's how photos work. Other things in the menu now, here are the settings. And the settings are where I can adjust a couple of things. Uh, this, this, I think you always want to have turned on. It enables this fly animation, so that's where it zooms out and it goes to a new location and it zooms back in. So it makes your journey a little smoother. I mean, you can shut it off and see what that's like if you'd like. I think most people prefer to have it turned on. There's also an animation speed, so if you think it's taking too long, when you fly from Rome over to Paris or, or from New York over to Chicago, you can adjust this. You can change that speed. Okay, um, the end animation, how you finish, you can change that. The orbital animation, so when you get to your location, you know how you, you tend to go around it very slowly. There are some other options here that you can try out. Units of measure. Right now we're in meters and kilometers, but you don't need to be. You could be in feet and miles, and then it would give you the conversion next to it, but whichever one you want first, you would set here. Um, how your latitude longitude, longitude are displayed uh, can either be done in the decimal form or in the traditional degrees, minutes, seconds form. Show zoom buttons. You can always use the mouse wheel to get in and out, but if you want to see the zoom buttons, you turn that on here. You can also shut it off. Okay, memory cache size. So this is something you can play with if you find that things are not loading quickly enough. Um, you can create a larger cache and that will make things appear more quickly. It'll make the images build more quickly. Um, but it can overtax your computer if your computer is not up to it. So you have to play with it to see if it's going to work for you. It could potentially, you know, crash the program. So you're going to have to close it and restart it. But, you know, it might be worth playing around with a little bit. And then uh, enable KML file import. Uh, as we discussed with Google Maps, a KML file is, uh, or a KMZ file, it are just files, they're map formats, so they help reconstruct these images. It's the way you would save this and import it into another application or share it with somebody else who could bring it into this application.
Okay, there's also a reset to default. So if you play around with it and you think, oh, you know, I messed it all up, you just click the reset to default. Okay, the only other options here are feedback. So if you, uh, feedback and help. So if you click on the feedback option, it would allow you to take a screenshot, include that if you wanted, and then if you're having problems, you can send these along uh, to Google. It'll take the information I wouldn't expect or gar guarantee or even expect a quick response or anything you probably won't get it but they do they do take this feedback and over time I think incorporate it in some of their decisions with the product and then the last option down at the bottom is this help menu now when you see these help menus in um, any one of these Google tools they're a good thing because if you open it up you're going to notice that the help is help that's focused specifically on this tool so instead of being a search of, you know, everything on the web or on all the Google tools or something, uh, it's going to give you some, some questions and some articles and allow you to search content that's strictly focused on Google Earth in this case. Okay, let's take a look now at the last control we haven't looked over at the left, and that is the My Places. If you open it up, you'll see that right away it gives you this option to import a KML file and I'm going to do that I've downloaded one uh, your earlier instructions had you do this so I'm going to open this file I've saved it to my computer it's called query.kml and open that up Take just a second to load. And now it's going to reorient me on my map again. And you can see this particular file, this came from US uh, Geological Survey, and it includes earthquake information that I downloaded. So these are all folders. They've packaged it by date. So here's the 21st of August, and it goes all the way uh, one day at a time until the uh, 20th of September. But if I open those up, you'll find individual points in there. And if I click on them, I'm sorry, if I double click on them, it will bring me over to that point. And you can see now these circles, these are the things that came in, uh, the objects that came in with this map. These are actually uh, points of earthquakes. So if I mouse over that, you can see that's a 5.1 and uh, where it occurred. Now in this case, I probably don't want to mix. I probably don't need pictures of this right now. So I could go into my settings over here and just turn the photos off. That's easy enough. And then closing this side pane is going to allow this key showing me the size of the circle is indicating a magnitude and the color of the circle is indicating the, um, the time frame in which it occurred. So this, this occurred in the last hour. It's a 4.6. It's hard to distinguish exactly between these two sizes. But just from the size of this, you know it's a medium-sized quake. You're not seeing the smaller ones because the data that I output, I specified that the quakes had to be a 4.5 or greater. Okay, so you're not going to see the small ones. Now, other uses for my uh, the My Places area over here. Um, once you're in here, you can modify this data, you can select it, and now I'm going to throw that in the trash, and I'm going to throw that one in the trash, so I'm going to select a bunch of them and discard them. Okay, so I, I can adjust the data as it's as I already have it. I can also come in here and um, click the little label and rename this if I wanted to, uh, especially if I'm building my own data, that can be useful. These options are simply to, um, this is and see that this is to export as a KMZ and this one is to export as a KML so those are your two options the difference between a KML and a KMZ is that the KMZ file is zipped okay so the information is packaged just a little differently um, it makes the file quicker to download easier to pass around it also requires someone to unzip that um, to get into it to look at it so so a minor difference but a difference now if I, if I don't want this data anymore I simply I can save it but I can also simply discard it and now I'm back here 
if I refresh my screen after I've discarded my data, Google Earth is going to reload. But if I go back into that area where I was uh, near Japan, those circles are no longer going to exist there. Um, here we are. So it brought me back to the same location, and you can see that data is now just absent. I don't have it at all. Okay, so let's come here to the West Coast. I'm going to search for... Uh, I can gain the search here. I could have gotten it here. Uh, San Francisco, California. And this is nice because it, um, it brings up this little explanation, which I can click on to get an expanded explanation. Okay, it gives me lots and lots of information from population to minimum wage, um, points of interest, etc. So a lot of information has been loaded about San Francisco. And it also gives me this option to bookmark it or save it to my places. So if I do that, you can see it's been added over here. Now I'm simply going to go back to search and I'm going to say, let's take a little tour of the West Coast here and I'll say uh, San Diego, California. Okay, and I can zoom in, I can do whatever I'd like here, but I can take that initial location and add that as well. So now it's in my places as well. If I open this up, a little slow, you can see I have both of them here. And I can keep adding to that list. And if I do, then clicking on one of these, or I'm sorry, double-clicking on one of these, will reorient me to that location. Okay, that's basic tour of the functionality of uh, Google Earth in the browser, in the browser version. And in uh, a couple of future videos, we're going to look at Google Earth Pro, which is the one you download and install, and, and you have more capability with that. And specifically, you'll be able to create your own tours and prepackaged so and share those with students, or have your students, even better, have your students create tours and, and include uh, all relative informa relevant information uh, within those tours.